Hi, Patrick Dean here, and I wanted to uh, come on here and share a story with you that I heard. I love stories, and uh, I think stories tell us a lot. I mean, we look at movies, we look at uh, uh, stories in every area of our life, and I think that uh, stories speak to our heart. And this is one of the stories that spoke to my heart, so I really was um, uh, kind of uh, driven to, to share it with you. It's a story about an ancient people. And the ancient people were very oppressed in their experience of their life. They really hadn't experienced any joy and satisfaction. It was an old, it was a tribe of people. So they turned to God and asked what was the message that God was trying to send them. What was going on here? And they landed on a very, very ancient story. And that story went like this. How could, uh, and it started with this question, how could, if everything was God and everything was, was uh, uh, about God, how could there be any room for anything else in the universe but God? And the story says that God withdrew himself onto himself. And when he withdrew himself onto himself, he left all this space in the universe to create everything around us. Now, when he withdrew, there was the spirit of God, a fire that was uh, that he put into every single thing that was created in that universe, in that place that he stepped back from and in that space. So everything, according to this story, had the fire of God within it. But the story goes on to say that it was so powerful, this fire and this spirit of God, that it shattered like a vessel that shattered with a thousand tiny pieces that went all over the universe. And in each piece of this, and it caused this kind of crisis, in each piece was the spirit and the fire of God. So it became... In the story, the people's purpose is to gather together again all of those pieces out in the universe and bring them back as one. And so our oppressed people believed that this story represented something to them to strive for. And so they wanted to know how to bring all of these pieces back together again. So they went to their religious leaders and they asked, how can we do this? And the religious leaders gave them this advice. You must follow the, um, the word of God, the written word of God, and you must follow that exactly and to obey every single rule and never vary. And then you can bring back the spirit of God. And so the people uh, started and became very uh, militant about each little word from God. Everything that was they thought God had said, they tried to do it a certain and a specific way. And after a while, they noticed that nothing had really changed around them, that there was no room for the expression of who they were as individuals because they were uh, working with this literal form of, um, of the experience of, of trying to uh, please God by doing everything to the letter. So they got discouraged. And then they went on to another group of people to ask the, these people. And these people were ma like magicians and seers and stuff. And they went to these, people, uh, these leaders and they said to them, how can we live uh, uh, a, a better life in the spirit of God? And so... Uh, the magicians and seers said that what you've got to do is that you've got to wait. And all you have to do is wait because you've suffered so long that all you need to do is wait and sit back. And eventually what's going to happen is uh, the, spirit, uh, the spirit of God and the gathering of these will come to you and you'll be able to do that. And it'll change your living situation. So they did that for a long time. And what they noticed that was nothing changed in their environment at all. And they again got discouraged. 
But then they ran across a few wise men and women. And what the wise men and women told them was a completely different story. They said that what to do, what you need to do to live this experience of fulfillment and satisfaction and love in your life is to uh, go and search within yourself. Become the person that you are, are authentically. To live uh, your individuality and to reach out and to operate from compassion and action out in the world in such a way that your personality is expressed in the fact of this divine experience within you. And so they began the process of learning and experiencing who they were at the deepest level. All of their fears, all of their joys, all of their past, all their experience. And they started to work with this so that they could become more, uh, more about this uh, divine spirit. And so after a while, what started to happen was they began to see not only that experience within themselves, this because of the work they did, because of their willingness to be honest and open, but they began to notice the spirit uh, within other people. And so it began to free them up to see the spirit and to see the fire that's in every single human being. And thus, they began in the process of bringing us all back together again and to feel that uh, experience within us and the compassion and especially the connection that we have with every other person. And so they begin to live a life of fulfillment and satisfaction, a life of contribution and um, compassion. And this is, uh, this is where we are left off right now, according to the story. And so when I read that, I went, of course, then our purpose would be, the purpose in our life is to live with this compassion and caring for each other. And that is the way that we create fulfillment and satisfaction within our life, uh, in ourselves. So this is a powerful realization that uh, fulfillment and satisfaction uh, is, com is connected to our ability to connect with other people and see the greatness within them. I don't know. It's an old legend. It seems like these days we're really involved in a lot of self-interest or doing what uh, we can for ourselves, which I guess is okay, but we, uh, when we do that, I think we lose the purpose. According to this story, we lose that, uh, that uh, uh, original purpose. So my challenge, for, my challenge for myself, of course, is to look within myself and operate from less judgment and less categorizing and see other people as separate and start to see the complete picture of what we're doing and what we're up to. I think there's a great, there's a great uh, uh, quote that goes, everyone, is uh, everyone in life is fighting a hard battle. We just can't see it uh, within every person. And so treat every person as if they were struggling within themselves in this hard battle, no matter how they look on the outside. So let's, um, uh, let's start to think about that, and uh, uh, we'll be living more in satisfaction and fulfillment. Thank you for listening to me. This is Patrick Dean, and hopefully we will uh, have some more stories and some other videos coming up. And um, thanks, thanks again. Bye-bye.